Calgary is a city in Alberta, Canada that grew rapidly due to the oil industry. A large metropolitan city, it has a very low crime rate. All of Calgary is safe during daylight hours, which is good because you traverse the town using the C-Train, one of the busiest rail systems in North America with 306,900 weekday riders. Today we are visiting three of Calgary's main attractions, the Calgary Tower, Glenbow Museum, and Logheed House. We enjoyed breakfast at the rotating restaurant in the Calgary Tower before going to the 360 degree observation deck to take photos. It takes 61 seconds by elevator to reach the observation deck from the ground floor. The Calgary Tower was constructed from 11,000 tons of steel reinforced concrete in 1968 and stands 628 feet tall. On windy days, the tower can sway up to 7.5 inches and can withstand winds of up to 161 kilometers per hour, which is equivalent to 100 miles per hour. The views of the city were spectacular, offering reflections of buildings, the Canadian Rockies to the west, artwork on nearby building roofs, walls, and pedestrian areas, interesting buildings, and more. The Saddle Dome is the primary indoor arena for Calgary with a seating capacity of 19,289 people. It is located on the Stampede grounds and was built in 1983 to serve as the new home of the Calgary Flames, Calgary Hitmen, and Calgary Roughnecks and to host ice hockey and figure skating during the 1988 Winter Olympics. The First Nations people from Treaty 7 Nations make up the Elbow River Camp of Teepees to help visitors learn their traditions and culture during the Calgary Stampede. The Bow River you see in these photos runs from the Glacial Bow Lake in the Canadian Rocky Mountains flows through Calgary and continues south to join the Oldman River west of Medicine Hat, eventually becoming part of the Saskatchewan River. A glass floor spanning 36 feet by 4 and 1 half feet was installed on the observation deck in 2005. The 18 glass floor panels are two and a quarter inches thick and each floor panel will support the weight of two hippos. I walked along the edge of the glass floor from the wall and worked my way along the window, not doing bad until I wanted to get off. The edge had filled with people and I was afraid to walk across the open clear glass panel. Paul came to the rescue and helped me, then went tromping over it himself to the edge with no problem. Show off. A fun bit of history is that when the tower opened on June 30, 1968, it was the tallest freestanding tower in North America. While under construction, developers claimed it would be 614 feet tall to prevent competitors from surpassing the height. San Antonio, Texas built a tower 623 feet high and only after their construction was complete did Calgary reveal the true height of its tower to be 628 feet. Glenbow Museum has been in existence for 53 years and holds a combination of modern art and museum items that depict culture, lifestyles, battles, technology, and more. The impressive exhibits encompass multiple floors and a beautiful staircase and chandelier. The feudal lords of the samurai, the daimo, were the military rulers of the provinces. This elaborately decorated armor reflects the wealth of a high-ranking samurai. The sword has high-quality gold inlays and a gold-filled lacquered scabbard. A mounted guardless dirk is worn as a companion sword. There is no information on how the museum obtained this Japanese warrior uniform, and one can only assume it is from a Canadian samurai war. This story robe, Blood, is mid to late 19th century. The stories were compiled by Little Dog and told in his own words. Large drums were played in unison by four or more drummers. The songs were a combination of words and vocables, which are wordless sounds. 
Each nation had strong traditions about creating and singing, and the music and words were never written down. Maui warriors of the 1840s have elaborate personalized tattoos on their face to intimidate the enemy. They wore amulets of jade or whalebone in remembrance of the spirits of their warrior ancestors. Their kilts were made of separate strands of flax fiber that attached to a waistband and allowed free movement while protecting the legs in heavy brush. The brown vest musket replaced the earlier clubs and spears. His Majesty's ship, Victory, was an English ship circa 1765. This model was built in the 1930s. The ship carried more than 100 guns and 900 crewmen who were trained to board and capture enemy ships. There were two battles depicted in miniature at the museum. This is the Battle of Waterloo, which took place in 1815 and was the culmination of Napoleon's last attempt to regain power when he led a French army group of 75,000 men into Belgium to battle with the Duke of Wellington, who was in command of an Anglo-Dutch army of 68,000. Late during the first day of battle, Duke Wellington received help from the Prussian army. Napoleon fled the battlefield, pursued by the English and Prussian cavalry. Napoleon was defeated by the Duke of Wellington, which brought an end to the Napoleonic era of European history. In 1937, Bill Heron was using a cable tool drilling rig when 300 feet below the surface the cable broke and the tools were sitting on the bottom of the hole. Bill stuffed rags into a fur cap to serve as a hard hat and had his crew lower him into the hole on a rope to retrieve the tools. Jeff DeBauer created this barbed wire Bronco in 2006 using more than two miles of barbed wire. The inspiration for this was Cyclone, the bucking horse that threw 129 men before Tom Three Persons rode him to a standstill in the 1912 Calgary Stampede. Passing of the Ram's Head Snuff Mole is an old mess tradition in many Highland regiments. At the conclusion of dinner, snuff, which is a finely ground tobacco, is placed into the mall and is offered to guests by a junior officer. This is a recreation of a shop that built armor for battle. The Battle of Crecy was fought in 1346 in Normandy, France. It was a battle between a 35,000-man French army commanded by King Philip VI and a 15,000 English army commanded by King Edward III. The French were undisciplined, reckless, and failed to fight as a unified body and were defeated by the smaller English army, which was a disciplined unit of longbowmen. The French threatened to cut off the drawing fingers of any English they captured, which resulted in the archers creating an insulting two-finger salute as a sign of defiance and contempt toward the French. The Curtis Jenny's dragonfly wings, struts, and cross pieces were beautiful and precarious. The temperamental airplane was likely to stall during flight. Take a step back in time to a soda fountain complete with a meat cleaver on the wall, a baker cabinet behind the counter, and a main jukebox and a tabletop jukebox where you can drop in your quarter and select your songs without leaving your table. This radio is called Voice of the Prairie. In the early 1890s, itinerant storytellers wandered the country and were the voice of the prairie, passing their stories from generation to generation. One storyteller, Davy Quinn, was telling stories when he was discovered by a radio entrepreneur. Davy became famous on radio as the Voice of the Prairie. The Logheed House is a national and provincial historic site. This 14,000 square foot sandstone prairie mansion was built in 1891 by Senator Sir James Alexander Logheed and his wife, Lady Isabella Clark Logheed. Considered one of the finest residences in Canada's West, the couple raised their family here and the home became a social and political hub until 1936. The senator had died in 1925 and Isabella in 1936 and the family possessions were sold at auction in 1938. 
This is the entrance foyer in Main Hall. In the back you see what looks like a closet with a couch in it, which is a chimney corner. During the Victorian era, a curtain would have draped over the opening and the space would have been used by ladies who would draw the curtain so they could remove their footwear discreetly to avoid showing even the hint of an ankle, foot, or leg. The drawing room is where in 1892 the Lokeeds held a housewarming ball for 130 guests. Isabella entertained visitors with tea on the first Thursday of every month and it served as a funeral parlor when their youngest child died in 1917 at age 12, for the senator when he died in 1925, and again for Isabella in 1936. This room has an ornate plaster ceiling and fireplace surround painted to look like marble. The library held one of the finest private collections in the West. It had built-in bookcases with glass doors. Following the death of Lady Lokeed, the entire collection of several hundred books was sold at auction for only $22. This is an antique wooden pump organ. Other common names are reed organ, parlor organ, cabinet organ, and cottage organ. Pump organs became less popular in the late 1900s when home pianos became popular. When the home was built in 1891, the mission room was an open porch overlooking the gardens. In 1907, the family enclosed the porch and converted it into a room for recreation and relaxation. It gets its name from the mission-style wood paneling. The dining room features an overhead dome. The panels of the dome were originally stained glass, which would have radiated color into the room. In the 1950s, it was believed to be leaking, so it was covered up and was discovered during restoration. The Prince of Wales, Prince George, and the Duke of Connaught all dined here. The bar is a modern addition that was built to match the room's style. This is the Lokeeds telephone and is from the early 1910s. It was one of the first telephones in Calgary and the telephone number was 77. The location was likely elsewhere in the home and out of sight because it was likely answered by servants. This stained oak fireplace is located in the senator's bedroom. Lady Lokeed's bedroom is one of two rooms that made up her suite. Much of the furniture in this room is original, which unfortunately does not hold true for many of the rooms in the home. This is the second floor hall. The trim and doors are oak. Notice the transom windows above the doors which would have been opened and closed to improve airflow. This framed exhibit shows the 1891 knob and tube wiring. These would have been connected to bell pushes in the bedrooms that rang the servant's bellboard in the basement. The anagalypta on the wall is a less expensive version of wall covering, which is why it is in the upstairs hall and bedrooms, not on the main floor. It is made of wood pulp and cotton and has a rich texture and intricate pattern. The Lokeed house sits on the same 2.8 acres it was originally built on. Everything east of the home was beautiful gardens and pathways with terraced gardens because of the unlevel ground. The Lokeeds were in the Calgary Horticulture Society and won prizes and competitions for their gardens. Today's gardens feature only turn-of-the-century species. Paul and I hope you enjoyed our tour of the Calgary Tower, Glenbow Museum, and Lokeed House. If you enjoyed learning about these great Calgary attractions, please click that like button below and leave us your comments. To receive notice each time we upload a new video, click the subscribe button and hit that notifications bell. We invite you to travel with us to some other areas of Canada, including the Calgary Area Preview where we give an overview of attractions in the surrounding area, the Royal Tyrrell Museum, a great place if you and your children enjoy dinosaurs, and the Gaspe Peninsula, a beautiful scenic area on the east coast of Quebec. Keep checking back so whenever we are rolling through North America, you can travel with us.